Hi my dear students, how are you? I am imagining that you are all saying in chorus that you are fine. Okay, that's very good. I pray to God that you all remain safe and happy. It's a lockdown scenario. We can't help it. We can't go to school. So we have to stick to this online classroom concept. Welcome to our English literature class. Today, I am going to tell you a story from Little Woman written by Louisa May Alcott. She was an American novelist and poet. Alcott supported her family by working as a domestic help, a teacher and later a nurse. So you can imagine that life was not at all easy for her. She published poems and short stories under different pen names in the early stages of her career. Alcott gained popularity only after the success of her novel Little Woman. She also wrote other books such as Little Men and Joe's Boys. But Little Woman was the most popular and today We'll be reading a chapter from that story whose name is Christmas Morning. Now let's read the story about four sisters who realize the difference between needs and wants on Christmas Day. Now let me write the names of the four daughters. The first daughter's name is Meg. The second daughter's name is Jo and the third one is Beth and the fourth daughter is Amy and she is the youngest of the family. So these are the names of the four daughters. In all total we are getting six characters in the story. We'll come. And uh, the mother's name is Mrs. March. Mrs. March. And uh, she is called by, she is called Marmy by the daughters, four daughters. Yeah. She is their mother. And another, uh, the last character is Hannah. Hannah is the name of the housekeeper. Although she is having a very short role in the story. Here. So on Christmas Eve, Christmas Eve means the day before Christmas. The four sisters were sad because their family cannot afford presents and their father was away at war. Meg remarked, I don't think it's fair for some girls to have plenty of pretty things and other girls having nothing at all. Amy said, it's so dreadful to be poor. Joe said, Christmas won't be Christmas without any presents. Beth was positive and said, We have got father and mother and each other. On hearing this, Joe complained, We haven't got father and shall not have him for a long time. Why? Because you know that their father was away at war and they did, uh, don't even know when he will come back. So the Four faces on which the firelight shone brightened at the cheerful words, but darkened again at Joe's comment. Now children, you know, uh, what is the firelight? The firelight is the fireplace. So in the beginning of the story, I started with Christmas Eve. Means it was the month of December. So it was really very cold. I know it's very difficult 
to imagine that weather, especially during this hot summer in the month of May. But still, try to. Then there was a cheery voice at the door and everyone turned to welcome a tall, motherly lady. She was not elegantly dressed, but a noble-looking woman and the girls thought the plain cloak covered the most splendid mother in the world. Means the dress that their mother was wearing was too simple for her. Mrs. March said, Well, dearies, how was the day today? There was so much to do that I didn't come home to dinner. While making the inquiries, Mrs. March got her wet things off, put on her warm slippers and sat down in her chair and took Amy, who was the youngest of all, to her lap, preparing to enjoy the happiest hour of her busy day. Mrs. March took out a letter and said, Her children, I've got a treat for you. Joe exclaimed, A letter, a letter, three cheers for father. A quick, bright smile went round like a streak of sunshine, means a ray of hope. Mrs. March said, Yes, a nice long letter. He is well and sends all sorts of loving wishes for Christmas and a special message to you. Girls, the letter which was addressed to Mrs. March said, Give them all my love. Them means his four daughters. Tell them I think of them by day and pray for them by night. A year seems very long to wait before I see them. But remind them that while we wait means the family, we may all work so that the hard days need not be wasted. I know they or the daughters will remember all I said to them, that they will be loving children to you will do their duty faithfully that when I come back to them I may feel prouder than ever of my little woman. So this was their father's letter. Everybody sobbed after reading the letter. Joe wasn't ashamed of the great tear that dropped off the end of her nose. And Amy hid her face on her mother's shoulder and said, I'll truly try to be better so dad may not be disappointed with me. Beth said nothing but wiped away her tears. Jo had a look of determination. She said, I'll try and be what he loves to call me a little woman and not be rough and wild but do my duty here instead of wanting to be somewhere else because she had always wanted to become a rich girl so when marmy read out the loving letter from their father the four sisters realized that they have been acting selfish Joe was the first to wake in the grey dawn of Christmas morning. No stockings were hung at the fireplace because now they had no wants for their own. Where is our mother? asked Meg. God only knows. Someone came begging and your ma went straight off to see what was needed. There was never such a generous woman for giving away food and drink and clothes, Hannah replied. Hannah had lived with the family since Meg was born 
and was considered by them all as a friend. Then their mother entered the room. The girls got eager to have their breakfast. Beth wished, Merry Christmas, Mommy. Mommy said, Merry Christmas, daughters. I want to say something before we begin. Not so far away from here lies a poor woman with four children huddled together to keep them freezing for they have no fire. There's nothing to eat and the oldest boy came to tell me that they were suffering from hunger and cold. My girls, will you give them your breakfast as a Christmas present? They were all usually hungry. Having waited nearly an hour and for a minute, no one spoke. And then the girls set to work packing the food for their neighbors. Amy said to her mother, I am so glad you came before we began to eat. Mother said, I knew that you all could do it. Come with me and help me. When we come back, we'll have bread and milk for breakfast. So on Christmas morning, Mommy asked her the four daughters if uh, they would like to give their breakfast to the Hummels. Hummels were the family who were in need of a good meal more than they need for themselves. So the March family made their way over the, to the Hummels with their packed breakfast. When they reached there, they saw a bare, bare means empty room with broken windows, no fire, torn bedclothes, a sick mother and three hungry children cuddled under sharing one old blanket trying to keep warm. The sick mother exclaimed, it is good angels, come to us. May exclaimed, funny angels in hoods and mittens. Hoods means caps and a mitten means mufflers. She says this because she could feel for the children who were not having real uh, proper warm clothes. In a few minutes, it really seemed that uh, as if kind spirits had been at work there. A fire was lit and Mrs. March gave the mother tea and soup and comforted her with promises of help. The girls in the meantime fed and played with the children. When they went away, leaving comfort behind there, they were the four happiest people than the hungry little girls who gave their breakfast and satisfied themselves with bread and milk on Christmas morning. So they spent a lovely time with the Hummels. When they reached home, the family was surprised to find a much fancier meal waiting for them. They thought, who could have sent them this food? They looked at each other out of surprise. There was ice cream, cake, fruit and bouquet of flowers. They stared first at the table and then at their mother. Meg questioned, is it the fairies? Amy said, it's Santa Claus. Mother said, all wrong. Old Mr. Lawrence sent it. Beth exclaimed, the Lawrence boy's grandfather. We don't even know him. Mother tells them that their neighbor, Mr. Lawrence, is a very kind and generous man. 
he saw the girl's kind deed means work and decided to reward them. Beth said, I wish I could send my part of the food to father. He won't be having such a Merry Christmas as we are. So this one is an adapted graphic story from your textbook and it was all about the story. I guess you have understood it and it's the time to leave your children for now. Remain connected with us. I'll be back again in the same class, same day and same place. Bye bye. See you and please take care and stay motivated.